Hi everybody, I am Dr. Armen Astvatsatrian, Professor Armen Astvatsatrian, so for you Dr. Y. And today we will talk about sarcoidosis. What is sarcoidosis? Sarcoidosis is an inflammatory disorder resulting in non-caseating granulomas in one or more organs and tissues. Etiology is unknown. The lungs and lymphatic system are most often affected but sarcoidosis may affect any organ. Pulmonary symptoms range from none to cough, exertional dyspnea, and rarely lung or other organ failure. Diagnosis usually is first expected because of pulmonary involvement and is confirmed by chest X-ray, biopsy, and exclusion of other causes of granulomatosis inflammation. First time treatment is corticosteroids. Prognosis is excellent for limited disease, but poor for more advanced diseases. For more advanced disease. Uh, sarcoidosis most commonly affects people aged 20s to 40, 20 to 40, but occasionally affects children and other adults. Worldwide prevalence is greatest in black American and ethnic northern Europeans, especially Scandinavians. Diseases presentation varies widely by racial and ethnic background, with black Americans having more frequent extra thoracic manifestations Sarcoidosis is more prevalent in women. Lovgren syndrome manifests as a triad of acute polyarthritis, erythema nodosum, and helior adenopathy, fever, malaise, and uveitis, and parotitis may also be present. Lovgren syndrome is, mo is most common among people of European ancestry. Lovgren syndrome is self-limited. Patients can usually be treated with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs alone. NSAIDs, uh, non-inflammatory drugs, rate or relapse is low. So rate of rate of relapse, of course. Rate of relapse is low. Uh, here for syndrome. So here for syndrome, uvea parotid fever manifests a swelling of the parotid gland, gland, gland due to sarcoid infiltration, uveitis, chronic fever, and less often palsy of the facial nerve. Here for syndrome can be self-limited. Treatment is the same as for sarcoidosis. Blau syndrome. Blau syndrome is a sarcoidosis-like disease inherited in autosomal dominant fashion that manifests in children. It is not known whether Blau syndrome arises through the same mechanism as sarcoidosis diagnosis in adults. In Blau syndrome, children present before the age of four years with arthritis. Uh, rash and uveitis. Blau syndrome is often self-limited. Symptoms usually are relieved with NSAIDs, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So etiology of sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is thought to be due to inflammatory response to an environmental antigen is a greatly susceptible person. Is genetically. Is genetically susceptible person. Uh, purposed triggers include uh, triggers. Propionobacterium acnes and mycobacteria, potentially the mycobacterium tuberculosis, catalase peroxidase protein, mild or milieu, and certain undertonified uh, substances present in workplaces with musty odors. Pesticides, particularly those containing aluminum compounds. Okay, so once again, pesticides, particularly those containing aluminium compounds. Tobacco use in universally correlated 
with sarcoidosis, no? obviously. Evidence supporting genetics, genetic uh, susceptibility including the following. Higher rate of disease concordance in monozygotic than dizygotic twins. Okay, so higher rate of diseases concordance in monozygotic than dizygotic, dizygotic twins. So in monozygotic than dizygotic twins. Huh? Higher rate of disease concordance in monozygotic than dizygotic twins. Increased prevalence of sarcoidosis about 3.6 to 9.6%. Uh, among first or second degree relatives of patients who have sarcoidosis. Five-fold increase in relative risk of developing sarcoidosis in siblings of patients who have sarcoidosis. Identification of several possible human leukocyte antigen, HLA, and non-HLA genes associated with sarcoidosis. So, about pathophysiology of sarcoidosis. The unknown antigen triggers a cell-mediated immune response that is characterized by the accumulation of T-cells and macrophages, release of cytokines and chemokines, and organization of responding cell into granulomas. Clusters of disease in families and communities suggest a genetic predisposition, shared exposures are less likely person-to-person -person transmission. The inflammatory process leads to formation of caseating granulomas, the pathologic hallmark of sarcoidosis. Yeah. Feature. Hallmark of sarcoidosis. Granulomas and collections of mononuclear cells and macrophages that differentiate into epitheloid and multinucleated gen cells and are surrounded by lymphocytes, plasma cells, fibroblasts and collagen. Granulomas occur most commonly in the lungs and lymph nodes but can involve any organ and cause significant dysfunction. Granulomas in the lungs are distributed along lymphatics with most occurring in Peri peribronchial, lar, subpleural, and peri uh, perilubular regions. Granuloma accumulation distorts architecture in affected organs. Whether granulomas lead directly to fibrosis or run a parallel course is not known. Hyperkalemia may occur because of increased conversion of vitamin D to the activated form 1,25 hydroxyvitamin D by macrophages. Hypercalciuria may be present even in patients with normal serum calcium levels. Nephrolithiasis and nephrocalcinosis may occur, sometimes leading to chronic kidney disease. Symptoms and signs of sarcoidosis. Symptoms and signs depend on the site and degree of involvement and vary over time, ranging from spontaneous remission to chronic indolent illness. Accordingly, frequent reassessment for new symptoms to different organs is needed. Most cases are probably asymptomatic and thus go under, under detected. Pulmonary disease occurs in more than 90% of adult patients. Symptoms and signs may include dyspnea, cough, chest discomfort and crackles, fatigue, malaise, weakness, anorexia, weight loss, and low-grade fever are also common. Sarcoidosis can manifest as fever of unknown origin. Systemic involvement causes various, various symptoms uh, which vary by race, sex, and age. Blacks are more likely than whites to have involvement of the eyes, liver, bone, marrow, peripheral lymph nodes, and skin. Erythema nodosum is an exception. Women are more likely to have erythema nodosum and eye, and eye, and eye and eye or nervous system involvement. Men and older patients are more likely to be hyper 
calcemic. So children with sarcoidosis may present with Blau syndrome, arthritis, rash, uveitis, or manifestation similar to those of adults. Sarcoidosis may be confused with juvenile idiopathetic arthritis. Uh, in uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis in this age group. And concerning diagnosis, uh, diagnosis of sarcoidosis, just imagine biopsy, exclusion of other granulomas disorders. Sarcoidosis is most often suspected when healer adenopathy is incidentally detected, incidentally, yeah? Incidentally, incidents detected on check X ray. Uh, bilateral helior adenopathy is the most common abnormality. If sarcoidosis is suspected, a chest X ray should be the first test. It first test it uh, if it has not already been done. The X ray appearance tends to rough, to roughly predict the likelihood of spontaneous remission in patients with only thoracic lymph node involvement. However, staging sarcoidosis by chest X-ray can be misleading. For example, extrapulmonary sarcoidosis, such as cardiac or neurologic sarcoidosis, can, pro, can uh, portent, portent, portent a poor preside, a poor prognosis in the absence of evidence of pulmonary involvement. Also, chest X-ray findings predict pulmonary function poor, poorly, so that chest X-ray appearance may not accurately indicate the severity of pulmonary sarcoidosis. A normal chest X-ray uh, doesn't exclude the diagnosis of sarcoidosis, particularly when cardiac or neurologic involvement is suspected. A higher resolution computer tomography is more sensitive for detecting healer and mediastinal lymphadenopathy and parenchymal abnormalities. Computer tomography findings is more advanced stages. Include thickening of the bronchovascular uh, bundles and bronchial walls, uh, bedding, uh, bedding sorry, of the interlobular uh, septa, ground glass opacification, parenchymal modules, cysts or cavities, traction, bronchoectasis. When imaging suggesting sarcoidosis, the diagnosis is confirmed by demonstration of non caseating granulomas on biopsy and exclusion of alternative causes of granulomatosis disease. Lovgren syndrome doesn't require confirmation by biopsy. The diagnosis evaluation therefore requires the following. Selection of biopsy site. Exclusion of other causes of granulomatous disease, granulomatous disease. Assessment of the severity and extent of disease to determine whether therapy is indicated. Sites for biopsy. Appropriate biopsy sites may be obvious from physical examinations and initial assessment peripheric lymph nodes, skin lesions, and, conject and conjectivity are easily accessible. And a bronchial ultrasound guided transbronchial need needle aspiration, ebus tibinae, huh? of a mediastinal or healer C lymph um, node has a reported diagnostic yield of about 90% and is the diagnostic procedure of choice in patients with intrathoracic involvement. Bronchoscopic transbronchial biopsy can be used when uh, ebustibinae is uh, endobronchial ultrasound guided transbronchial needle aspiration. So ebustibinae is a non-diagnostic non if the bronchoscopic transbronchial biopsy is non-diagnostic. It can be tried a second time. If ebus tibinae and bronchoscopic transbronchial biopsies are non-diagnostic or if it bronchoscopy cannot be tolerated, mediastinoscopy can be done to biopsy mediastinal or healer lymph nodes 
or video assisted thoracoscopic VAT video 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 assisted thoracoscopic VAT lung biopsy or open lung biopsy can be done to obtain lung tissue if sarcoidosis is strongly suspected but a biopsy site is not evident based on examination or imaging findings positron emission tomography PET scanning can help identify sites such as heart, bone, muscle and brain. Exclusion of other diagnoses is critical, especially when symptoms and x-ray signs are minimal because many other disorders and, and, and processes can cause granulomatosis inflammation. Biopsy tissue should be cultured for fungi and mycobacteria Exposure history to occupational silicates, beryllium, environmental, moldy hay, birds, and other antigenic triggers of hypersensitivity, pneumonids, and infectious tuberculosis, coccidoidomycosis, histoplasmosis. Antigens should be explored. Purified protein derivate PPD, the skin testing of interferon gamma gamma release assay should be done early in the assessment. Disease severity assessment, severity in assessing according to organ involvement, so for example, with only pulmonary involvement, pulmonary function tests, pulmonary function test results are often normal in early stages but demonstrate restriction and reduce diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide DLCO in advanced disease. Adding a six-minute walk test may characterize functional impairment more comprehensively than the results for pulmonary function tests alone. Patients with extensive lung involvement may have normal oxygen saturation at rest but may show desaturation with exertion. Recommended Routine screening tests for extrapulmonary disease include 12 lead ECG and echocardiography, slit lamp, slit lamp and ophthalmologic examination, routine blood tests to evaluate renal and hepatic function, serum calcium levels and 24-hour urinary calcium exertion. Cardiac magnetic resonance imaging MRI with and with added gadolinium contrast may be appropriate in patients with cardiac symptoms. In patients with neurologic symptoms, brain or spine MRI which or without gadolinium may be needed and bone scans and electromyography myography may be appropriate in patients with rheumatologic symptoms. PET scanning appears to be the most sensitive test for detecting bone another extrapulmonary sarcoidosis and is used together with MRI in patients with cardiac involvement. Abdominal computer tomography with radiopaque contrast agents is not routinely recommended but can provide evidence of hepatic or spleritic involvement. For example, enlargement, hippolucent lesions. Laboratory, laboratory testing plays an objective role in establishing the diagnosis and determining the extent of organ involvement. Complete blood count with differential may show anemia, eosinophilia or leukopenia. Serum calcium should be measured to detect hypercalcemia, blood urea nitrogen burn, creatinine and liver test results may be elevated in renal and hepatic sarcoidosis. Total protein may elevate it because of hypergamma hyper globulinemia. Elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate is common but not non specific. Measurement of calcium in a urine specimen collected over 24 hours is recommended to exclude hypercalciuria even in patients with normal serum calcium levels. Elevated serum angiotensin converting enzyme. enzyme Levels also suggest sarcoidosis but are non-specific and may be elevated in patients with other conditions. For example, hyperthyroidism, gaucher disease, silicosis, mycobacterial disease, 
fungal infections, hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, lymphoma. However, angiotensin converting enzyme levels, ACE levels, if elevated, may be useful for monitoring adherence with corticosteroid treatment. ACE levels, angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE levels plummet, plummet even when patients are taking low dose corticosteroids. Plummet event, plummet even, plummet even. Uh, bronchial bronchial velar leverage bell is used to help exclude other forms of intertinal lung disease in the if the diagnosis of sarcoidosis is in doubt to rule out infections the findings on bell vary vary considerably but lymphocytosis in the uh, in the leverage fluid cell differential or both suggest the diagnosis in the proper clinical context. However, absence of these findings doesn't exclude sarcoidosis. Holy blood, holy body gallium scanning has been largely replaced by PET scanning. If gallium scanning is available, it may provo- provide useful supported evidence in the absence of tissue conformation. Symmetric increased uptake in, mediast- in mediastinal and healer nodes, lambda sign, and in lacrimal, lacrimal parotid and salivary glands, Panda sign are patterns highly suggestive of sarcoidosis. A negative result in patients taking prednisone is unreliable. I guess it's largely enough for today. Yes, first part is over. So thanks for your attention. It will be next part, next lecture, of course. And that's all concerning sarcoidosis, first part. Goodbye. See you in another uh, in another lecture. So don't forget to make your uh, donates. How to make these donates you can find in description of this video. Bye. See you.